Director. M Mr. Thank Forrest. You, Mr. Thank you, Chairman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Secretary Geithner, for your testimony today. Uh, earlier in the conversation, you talked about the, the basis, one of the bases in the budget is simplification of corporate tax rates. And the reason for that was competitiveness and more jobs, lower rate, broader base. Uh, that way you create more investment, more jobs. Uh, now, on the other hand, uh, you say with respect to high-income individuals that those same rules don't apply. And so that when you raise taxes on the highest uh, tax brackets of Americans, the, the, the group of people that creates 50 to 60 percent of the small business jobs in this country, that it's okay, you can do it there and still create jobs. Uh, but that this, you, you use exactly the reverse logic for corporations. Can you explain the, the, the obvious problem in that logic? Absolutely. And again, I'm happy to um, talk about this very important question because, again, the test of everything we do should be measured through the prism of not just how are we reducing deficits, but what are we doing to growth, job creation, investment incentives in the, in the United States. That's the critical test. Now, what we propose in this budget is a series of very narrowly targeted, modest changes in taxation that only affect 2% of the richest individuals in the country. Or 50% of the small business jobs are created. And, and, and less than 3% of small businesses. And those small businesses that will be affected by this, again, are those structured where their income gets treated, their, their flow through entities, those are overwhelmingly businesses that are earning very substantial money. The median earnings annually of the businesses affected, that those 3% are north of $700,000. They are not small businesses in that definition, and substantial number of those businesses are what we would call uh, are, are look more like law firms or investment partnerships or hedge funds, not like the hardware store on Main Street. Now, again, those are the rates that prevailed in the 90s, which was the best period for small business growth, job creation, investment that we've seen in generations, and so we think that at a time when we have to make choices, we don't have unlimited resources, that's a prudent and responsible step. And again, as we cut spending, we want to make sure that those spending reductions go to reduce the deficits, not to sustain uh, tax preferences, tax subsidies that are very narrowly targeted, don't help growth uh, that we can't afford. The next uh, direction I'd like to go is to uh, uh, talk about the President's position on the debt ceiling increase. You, the president has said he wants a clean debt ceiling increase. Uh, one of the issues he's got is that there's a credibility gap. I mean, on this committee alone, on the other side of this room, we've got 39 votes against debt ceiling increases. Uh, the last time the president voted against one, he said there was a failure of leadership to vote for a debt ceiling increase. Uh, help us out on this side of the aisle. We, we came in on a, uh, a, a group of American voters that said enough is enough. No more debt ceiling increases. So help us walk down that path and understand why it's not a failure of leadership today to vote yes. You know, I didn't create this system, and you didn't either. And it's not a way to run a country. You know, Congress I would decides, concur. Congress decides the obligations we have as a country. We have to meet those obligations. That's our responsibility. But you set the obligations. You set that through a process. It's not a terrific process, but you set that through a process every year. And the debt we've taken on is a function of the choices all your predecessors made over time, Republicans and Democrats as a, as a time. There is no country on the planet that puts its members through this type of torture, to have to vote occasionally around increasing a limit that has already been locked in over time. It's Again, it's not a sensible way to run a country. Now, again, I think Mr. Wait, Hoyer spoke to this question the best way. Mr. Hoyer spoke to this question and said, it is a mistake. When I voted against, it was a mistake. It's not a responsible thing to do, and I don't think you want to put uh, the country through the position of having to have too much politics around something that goes so to the core of our credibility as a country. And again, if you, I, I don't, I don't envy the position you're in, I, and I wouldn't want to be in your position. Uh, there's nothing good to say about it except that you have to do it. Uh, there's no choice. <laughs> and, and we have to vote. Yeah, we have to vote. But, and I, but I want to compliment, you know, what... firing. Thank you. I want, to <laughs> I want to compliment what the chairman said and what your leadership has said, which is that, again, they recognize right away that we have obligations as a country. We don't play around with these things. Uh, we have to do it. And, again, we completely recognize and agree with you, and we owe this to the citizens of the country, that we have to demonstrate to them that we have to find a way to bring down these deficits over time. But... 
We're just making the pragmatic judgment. If you make it complicated and hard, just something that's already very hard, there's a greater risk that you're going to mess up the expansion because of that. Because again, if the world looks at us and they say, gee, is politics going to overwhelm common sense? Then they're going to start to be worried and you're going to see rates rise and we, can, we can't afford that. So you need to reassure people that again, your leadership is doing a very good job of saying this, that there is no risk that the United States of America will not meet its commitments in a timely manner. But again, we recognize your position you're in, and that's why I think it's good for us to try to find a way to lock in a medium-term plan, multi-year plan, that brings down deficits in ways that are going to be reasonably good for growth and investment.